Hi, I'm Prophet Tom James. God has put a mandate on my heart, and that mandate is to preach the prophetic word. time to come and to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This song, Touch, He Touched Me, is my favorite. To think that we were burdened with the pressures of society, to think that we were weighed down under the weight of everything around about us and yet in a moment like that the word of God tells us that he came and he touched us whatever you're going through this afternoon let him touch you as we worship oh he wants to touch you this afternoon as you reach out to him he wants to touch you Oh, something happened. Something happened to change Tom James. And now I can stand and worship him. And now I can magnify him. And now I can exalt him. Oh, he touched me. And that's what he wants to do to each and every one of us uh, as we arise every morning and go before him in worship and in praise. Almighty God, come and touch us. Come and transform us. Father, as we come into your word today, let your word become so real within our heart. Let your word become alive as we look at, at the great mysteries uh, that you revealed uh, to Paul and to John and to other great men throughout the history of the word of God. Father, as we look at each of these mysteries, let us sit back in wonder and say, He touched me. He touched me. Oh, yes. He touched me. We're going to begin looking at the seven mysteries of the New Testament. These mysteries are revealed to us through the Apostle Paul and through the Apostle John. Let us read in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. I'll read from the Passion Bible and we'll read these powerful words. It says, for the mystery of righteousness or as the King James would put it, of godliness. For the mystery of godliness is truly amazing. He was revealed, that is Christ Jesus, he was revealed as a human being. And as our great high priest in the spirit. So we have the, the great revelation of coming to an understanding of Jesus, the son of man but also Jesus, the Son of God. Angels gaze upon him as a man, and the glorious message of his kingly rulership is being preached to the nations. Many have believed in him, and he has been taken back to heaven and has ascended into the place of his exalted glory in the heavenly realm. Yes, great is the mystery 
of righteousness or great is the mystery of godliness. But before we begin to look at this first mystery, by way of introduction today, let me take you back to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, and we'll look at the first 13 verses. It says here, For this reason, I, Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you, Gentiles. This is one of the prison epistles. This epistle may have been written 30 years after Christ established the church at Ephesus. Oh, sorry, after Paul established the church at Ephesus. Christ did establish it, of course, through the apostle Paul. And now Paul is writing to them. He's writing to encourage them, but he's writing to give to them a special mystery, a mystery that has been also given to you and I. Verse 2 says, If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, and what does this mean? You see, we had the dispensation of the Old Testament where man reigned and lived under the law. But now we have the dispensation of grace, the dispensation of the New Testament. And of course, this was revealed through Peter and the apostles. But now Paul has that privilege and joy of revealing it to you and to me, the Gentiles. And so he says, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of grace, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already to you, he has made known to me. Paul is saying, I received this mystery from Christ alone. Where did Paul receive it? When he was in the desert, in the Bible college, where there was only him and God. Where did Paul receive it? When he was on his bed of a night, waiting out, waiting upon God, crying out to God, Lord, give me the word that I've got to share to the church at Ephesus. Where did he receive it? He received it by divine revelation from heaven itself. Verse 4 says, by which you have read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. See, he's already revealed that this mystery is about Christ. It's the greatest of all mysteries. The Old Testament prophesied it. The New Testament experienced it. And you and I, we live it. Verse 5 says, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of man, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles, that's you and I, friends, listen, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, fellow partakers, fellow rights. You see, uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 says that those that live by the Spirit are sons of God that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his 
power. And of course, we know that Acts chapter 9 reveals the unfolding of that power as Paul is on the road to Damascus and Christ appears to him on that road and commissions him when he goes into the city to the street called Straight and Ananias is sent to, to pray for his healing that his eyes would open and to baptize him in the Holy Ghost of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. To me, who am least than the least of all the saints, this grace was given. Church, if it was given to Paul, who says he was the least of all the saints, it's given to you today. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what, what road you've walked. I don't know what path you're going down. I don't know what trials are hitting you. But God's grace is there for you. As we started our worship today, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. I may have been black with to the tar of sin, but he touched me. My body may be riddled with a disease, but he touched me. I may have killed Stephen. I may have put Christians in jail. But he touched me. He touched me. And to make all see what is, this is important, what is the fellowship of the mysteries, of the mystery, which from the beginning of ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Christ Jesus. That's important. The fellowship. The fellowship of the mystery. You and I can fellowship together online here today. You and I can fellowship in church on Sunday. Two weeks ago, I was fellowshipping in Kenya and Zambia as I ministered the Word of God there with saints that were there, and we were fellowshipping in the mystery of Christ Jesus that has been revealed to us through the written Word by the Apostle Paul here in our Scripture to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly place. Oh, there's so much gem here, so much revelation here, so much we could share here. And through the months ahead, we will share some of these. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. On Tuesday, we will look at mystery and number one. But what a revelation Paul gives us in Ephesians chapter 3 here. As we come to close, let me reveal to you another mystery. As I bring a prophetic prayer over your life, let me reveal another mystery that Paul reveals to us. In Ephesians chapter 6, I pray these words over you. From the Passion Bible, it says, Pray passionately, O oh, Father, let us not be religious. Let us come before you passionately, Lord, 
Let us come before you with our heart beating, Almighty God. I can see Paul here on his knees crying out to the church at Ephesus saying, pray passionately in the spirit, not in the flesh, in the spirit. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Church, God is challenging us today. We live in difficult times, but the prophetic utterance for you today is don't look and focus on the environment around you, but pray passionately. Pray passionately. Father, your word today is revealing your mysteries and getting those revelations of your mysteries. Help us then to pray passionately in the spirit. Pray passionately for our families. Pray passionately to destroy the enemy. Pray pa passionately for our nations. Uh, pray passionately for the church. And we do that this day, almighty God. This is Prophet Tom. What a joy it has been with you to be with you today.